Hey, welcome back to the bench. Fred B. Radio here. Oh, so today I'm working on my B and K um, 970 radio analyst. This thing is great for working on transistorized radios. Um, really good. I mean, I get into that, but I'm having a problem, and I'm hoping you guys out there can help me find the answer. Um, so let's get into it. See what my problem is, and let's see if we can get this changed. Or maybe I can't. Maybe I have to live with it. Let me know. Okay, so here I have my BK970 uh, radio analyst. I, again, this is a very useful piece of equipment. Um, I am having a problem, and... It's kind of been like that for a while. I haven't paid too much attention to it, but I finally decided to dig into it and see if I could correct it. Okay, one of the things is this unit was made to run on 117 volts. Okay, um, if you look at my power line monitor, I'm up to about 125. If I go straight on, it is 125. Sometimes it's even a little bit higher. So in order to get an accurate voltage because this has multiple voltages uh one and a half uh three four and a half six six auto nine ten okay so you can see you can read okay and if you needed a bias voltage there's a bias plug down here that you could use and you could have your bias voltage okay moving along it's got the meter in the center it does a transistor test these two knobs are for the in-circuit. You move this knob to in-circuit or out of circuit, okay? And you could do your transistor testing. A uh, little old school, but it works. Um, it also, you can, you can do current. It's a volt ohm meter. And you can measure your voltage, and if you needed an ohm meter, you've got it here as well. And your ohms adjust. Uh, this side you have an audio level. It, it puts out, um, I think it's uh, 400 hertz tone. Okay, 400 or 1,000. I think it's 400. I'm not quite sure. And up here you have your RF. Uh, there's a coarse and then there's a fine. Okay. So, and again, it goes, you can shut this off. You can have it either uh, in, in the 250 to 800, 800 to 2000. It's designed to work on transistor radios and, and it does very well. I've been using it for a long time. Uh, you've got uh, 10 to 11.4 on FM and you also have an 88 to 108. So it's perfect for that. But here's, here's my problem and I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing you around the output, okay? that's what the output looks like and it's it's been like that for well for a long time probably since I got it never paid much attention to it because if I take this cable and I plug it into I plug it into my uh, frequency counter and let's just do that so where am I here I'm on this one standby uh, I'm on the 800 to 2000 range. Uh, let's put this at 1000 and 985. It's not super accurate, but again, I use it in conjunction. And I've been messing around. I might have misaligned it a little bit, but it's close. So I know that this dial here is very close to what it's supposed to be. And that's what I get. I mean, it really doesn't affect a lot of things other than when I look at that um, with a little bit of OCD, that bothers me. Uh, and it's like that regardless of what band I'm on. I'll switch the bands does the same thing 
So if we look at the, I got this on channel one. I'm now gonna put it on both, channel one and channel two. I currently have channel two attached to the input, to the base of that transistor. I'm gonna quick show you over here on the schematic. Right here, I made this neat little pointer. I've got it attached right here. So that's what's going into the transistor. Now, you see what's coming out of the circuit. I can probe the collector and I get that deformed waveform, okay? I've checked other components. Um, they all, they're all okay, well within spec. Uh, there is one, it's a 5.6K, it's reading 6.4, but when I bridged this with a, a resistance box, I brought the total down to 5.6, and had no effect, okay? So, what I'm thinking, and I'll show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch this up and down the bands. And move this a little bit. It's on every one. Give you a little brightness here. Okay, so it doesn't matter where I'm set. Keep the keep it down low. Anyway, that's what we get. So my thought was, well, okay, the transistor's bad. So let me uh, let me see what transistor it is. So I come over to the schematic and I look at this, and it says. 16L64. I'm like, okay, 16L64. I have no clue what a 16L64 is other than it being, where the heck's my finger? Other than it being an NPN. Okay. So I don't know what to replace it with. I try to find a 16L64 on the internet. I look, Mauser, Digikey, uh, Newark Supply, I can't find the 16L64. So I don't know what the specs are on this computer, on this uh, transistor. So what I did find was this uh, book online called, it's made by Motorola. It's called the HEP Semiconductor Catalog. Uh, I only have one page. I believe there's hundreds of pages. Um, so I looked through it and it, in its listings, it shows, it showed that 16L64. And it said it's a type, HEP type 50, NPN. And it has all the specs I need, okay? and it's a TO18 case. Awesome. So now I look through my junk box and I start finding what the HEP numbers are. Okay, in my junk box. Um, unfortunately, I only have one. That's all I need is the 2N2369 is an HEP 50, okay? So with that, I now know um, what I can use in place of the 16L64. Never knew this book existed. Uh, again, I only have the one page. It's called the Motorola uh, HEP Semiconductor Catalog. And uh, I... I I now have it saved. It's on World Radio History. Uh, if you can go in there, you can find it. 
to me, this is going to be valuable working on old equipment with um, <laughs> uh, transistors and things that may not exist anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try replacing that one transistor. I can't see it. And yeah, we're not focusing too good here. It's small. Uh, but this is the uh, 2N, what I say it was, 2369. And we'll come back and see what it looks like. Will it look any better than that? Again, this is going into the transistor. This is coming out of the transistor. So we'll see. And the other thing is, I, before I put you guys down and, and start working on changing that, um, this was designed, it says in the manual, 117 volts. Well, again, if I run, run it on my regular house current, the voltage is, I'm gonna, I'll boost it up to what the line current is. That's where it is. So I could have do a couple things. I'll bring this back down. I have my PR57, okay? And it's got a nice little line there for 117, so you know exactly where to go. Okay. Um, what I did was I found this, isotap. And you can vary the outputs, okay? High, medium, or low. Usually I have it right in there on this setting. So that was my um, solution to the DC voltages here. I mean, you're working on a transistor radio and you're at, you want six volts. And if your line voltage is up at 125 where it is most of the time, I'm on seven volts. Is that gonna really be real bad? No, but I'd like to have it where it should be. So that's gonna affect current and everything else. So if you've got one of these or you just got one, be careful of the uh, DC voltages if you're using them. Okay, to explain what I did was, let me get my little pointer. I, instead of taking the whole transistor out, I cut the lead here because it's standing eh, quite a ways off the board. It's not close to the board. So I cut the lead and I attached the other one in circuit, you know, out of circuit. And I'm going to show you that, okay? And get over here. You can see... I cut the cut the base and just attach the other two and then down here I attach the other transistor looks a little wonky but it didn't work so that's what I have again this is the input to that transistor this is the output to that transistor uh, any suggestions uh, would be appreciated uh, because again the sine wave looks a little bit better than it did before but it's not perfect uh, I don't know should I take that transistor out completely will that help it am I causing a problem by having the collector and emitter of the original transistor still in circuit I mean, it's in order to get that out it's a tough one this board would have to come out to get to that transistor which is way over here okay it's quite a ways in on the board so yeah, use my uh, again we're talking way way back here uh, that's quite a ways under the board which means 
uh, this would have to come off the front panel. All right. And all the wires coming from the coil section would also have to be removed uh, in order to get to that. So I could either do that or I call it do a shango because uh, he does this sometimes in difficult positions is he clips it, leaves the leads long and then just solders the new transistor right there in place. Make a little coil, slide it down, solder them on, good to go. Makes it easier than taking everything apart. I've already recapped all of the electrolytic caps. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. And again, change frequency, same thing. So if anybody has any ideas, um, I've mentioned the 5.6 ohm. I'm gonna shut this off because I don't wanna short anything out. There's a, a 5.6 right over here, which is now 6.4. But again, I put a, a, a resistance box across it and dialed it in so that the total resistance would be uh, 5.6 and made absolutely no uh, difference in the output. So that's where I'm at, guys. Uh, click like, subscribe, and... Let me know what you think. Could always use the help. This is a great forum. Everybody helps out. So, uh, again, B and K uh, 970 radio analyst. I enjoy using it on transistor radios. It's all in one, except for the scope, which I have right next to it. So I could always use that as well. But uh, thanks a lot. Hope to hear from you.